Good morning. Previously, we derived equations for position, velocity, and acceleration of an object moving in simple harmonic motion. Flippin' physics. Now we are going to look at graphs of those equations and demonstrate them using a simple harmonic motion projection from circular motion. Oh, good. That's insane. Uh, sure. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. These are the three equations we derived previously. Billy, what are omega and phi? Phi is the phase constant, which phase shifts the curve along the horizontal axis, and omega is the angular frequency, which we derived by using the equation angular velocity equals the angular displacement over change in time, and if the object experiences one full revolution or cycle, then the change in time equals the period, and the change in angular position equals 2 pi radians. And we know frequency equals the inverse of period, therefore angular frequency omega equals 2 pi times frequency. Thank you, Billy. Now, for simplicity's sake, we are going to assume phi is zero for all of the functions we are about to graph and demonstrate. Okay, let's look at the circular motion of a yellow marker cap on a turntable along with a motion tracked dot on top of the cap. And a dot motion tracked in just the vertical direction that shows the relationship between simple harmonic motion and circular motion. And let's add a vertical mass spring system for just a bit to show that it truly is simple harmonic motion. Okay, the, the dot that is motion tracked to the marker cap but only in the vertical direction moves just like the vertical mass spring system. It really is simple harmonic motion. Thanks. Yes, yes it is. Let's go back to just the dot because it has a more precisely identified location. Notice, if we look at where the dot is located as a function of time, the dot specifically follows the equation we derived. Position equals amplitude times cosine of angular frequency times time. Unlike last time, where we graphed the x position as a function of time, in this example we are graphing the y position as a function of time. And if you are paying careful attention, you will notice we have set the initial time for the y position graph after the turntable is rotated 90 degrees relative to the circular motion for the x position graph. This makes it so we end up having the same position equation we had before. This is because sine and cosine curves are phase shifted from one another by 90 degrees. Okay, now let's look at where our three simple harmonic motion positions are on the graph. Positions one and three are at the maximum magnitude displacements from rest position, which means their distance from equilibrium position equals amplitude. And position two is at rest position, which you can also see on the graph. Now let's look at the velocity graph. This is the velocity of the dot moving in simple harmonic motion. I have also added the tangential velocity of the yellow marker cap to the circular motion and the velocity of the motion track dot moving in simple harmonic motion. As we derived before, this graph is the velocity equals the negative of amplitude times sine of angular frequency times time. Watch how the velocity of simple harmonic motion is represented by the graph, and how the velocity of simple harmonic motion is the vertical component of the tangential velocity of the yellow marker cap moving in circular motion. I don't know, what was that about the vertical component? Okay, let's pause everything for a moment so I can illustrate that better. Do you see how the velocity of the object in simple harmonic motion is the vertical component of the tangential velocity of the yellow marker cap moving in circular motion? Oh, sure, thanks. That does make sense. And you can see how the velocity has a value of zero at positions one and three, and the velocity has its maximum magnitude at position two. Oh, and the velocity's maximum magnitude must equal amplitude times angular frequency. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yes, I agree, that, that is pretty cool. Now let's switch to acceleration. Remember in our example, acceleration equals negative amplitude times angular frequency squared times the cosine of angular frequency times time. I have added the centripetal acceleration of the yellow marker cap to the circular motion and the acceleration of the motion track dot moving in simple harmonic motion. Again, watch how the acceleration of simple harmonic motion is represented by the graph and how the acceleration of the simple harmonic motion is the vertical component of the centripetal acceleration of the yellow marker cap moving in circular motion. Uh, could you pause it again? Sure. 
The acceleration of the object in simple harmonic motion is the vertical component of the centripetal acceleration of the yellow marker cap moving in circular motion. And again, you can see how the acceleration has its maximum magnitude at positions one and three, and the acceleration is zero at position two. And the acceleration's maximum magnitude must equal amplitude times angular frequency squared. Well, that is pretty cool. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, I don't think I have anything more to add. Mr. P? Um, uh, yes, Bobby? I, I hate to bring it up, but I'm really confused. I, I mean, we did these derivations of velocity and acceleration as a function of time for simple harmonic motion uh, last time, and we're doing the graphs this time, but I, I don't see where the equations come from and the, and the graphs. I, I, I don't, I don't, I'm just not getting it. Sure, we can try to clarify. Does anybody have any ideas? We could use the derivative. I, I don't know calculus. But the derivative represents the slope of the line and, you know, slope, right? Oh, yeah. So, um, the slope of position as a function of time is velocity. Could... Can we use the slope to go from the position graph to the velocity graph? That is a great idea. I actually don't know why we did not do that in the first place. Billy, could you please? Oh, good. We, we get to use the magic tangent line finder. Uh, let's start at position one. The slope of the position graph at one is zero, which is why the velocity graph is zero at one. As we go from one to the first two, the slope of the tangent line becomes negative and slowly becomes more negative until we get to two which is why the velocity is negative between one and two and becomes more negative as we go from one to two. Oh, but the slope of the position as a function of time graph starts to increase after we pass by two and the slope eventually goes back to zero at three, which is why the velocity has its largest negative value at the first position two and then increases to zero at position three. And then the slope is positive and increasing from three to two, uh, reaches a maximum value of two and then the slope decreases to zero at one, which is why the velocity increases from zero at one to its maximum value at two, and then decreases to zero from two to one. Yeah, these graphs show that the slope of the position graph is the velocity graph. Very nice, Billy. Bobby, could you please do the same thing with the velocity and acceleration graphs? Well, we know the slope of a velocity as a function of time graph is acceleration. Starting at position one, the magic tangent line finder shows us that the slope of the velocity curve is negative there, and as we go from one to two, the slope increases in value to zero at position two. That is why the acceleration at position one has its largest negative value and then increases to zero at two. From two to three, the slope of the velocity curve is positive and increases to its maximum value at three. That is why the acceleration is positive and increasing from two to three and has its maximum value at three. From three to two, the slope of the velocity curve is positive but decreases to zero at two. That is why the acceleration is positive and decreases to zero from three to two. From two to one, the slope of the velocity curve starts at zero becomes negative and reaches the same maximum magnitude negative value it had back at the original position one. That is why the acceleration is zero at position two, becomes negative from two to three, and increases in magnitude to its maximum negative value at position one. Okay, yeah, that, that really helps. Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. Sure. Bobby, you are welcome. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.